Good day, I'm Twyla Whelan and this is your Jazz News for Tuesday, October 29, 2024. After losing her home to fire two years ago, Marsha Davis of Seaforth St. Thomas now has a new home thanks to the Ministry of Local Government and Community Development's indigent housing program. Prime Minister Andrew Holness handed over the keys to the two-bedroom dwelling on Friday. According to Dr. Holness, some 6,000 Jamaican households live in substandard conditions. He says the government is working to improve the standard of living of the most vulnerable through the indigent and new social housing programs. If as a government, we can replace those little shacks and hovels and living in cars and, you know, some people living under cave in all kinds of terrible situations. If we can replace that with proper housing, then we would have lifted the entire society. And that is the system that we have put in place. Meanwhile, Minister of Local Government and Community Development Desmond McKenzie said more indigent houses are under construction within the parish and other developments are also in the pipeline. St. Thomas is slated to benefit in Cheswick, which was the second community under the rural development project that we started some three years ago. Cheswick is slated to have eight indigent housing solutions provided in that community over the next couple of months. Still in St. Thomas, local government minister Desmond McKenzie announced that the Yalas market will soon be renovated. He said the St. Thomas Municipal Corporation now has control of the property following the expiration of a 25-year lease on the land. The St. Thomas Municipal Corporation now has possession of the market. And as soon as the estimates are completed, the ministry will provide the funds to renovate the Yalas market so that the vendors finally can go back into the market and ply their trade and be better than they are today. In other news, the government has accepted a proposal from United Kingdom UK firms Ryder Architecture and CAA Icon for the redevelopment of the National Stadium. Minister of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sport Olivia Grange made the disclosure at a press conference recently. She said the entities have been involved in the development of other sports grounds around the world such as Wembley, Arsenal's Emirates, the O2 and Stamford Bridge in London and Stadia Roma and the San Siro in Italy. The document in essence proposes to not only address the shortcomings of the existing stadium but also to identify through qualitative and quantitative assessment the full potential of this iconic stadium through its enhancement as a major tournament venue, training center and visitor attraction to promote Jamaica and Jamaican sport talent. Earlier this year, the government of Jamaica and the UK signed a framework for cooperation to undertake the National Stadium Redevelopment Project. Minister Grange said the next step is to proceed to Phase 1, which is a stadium assessment and feasibility study. The study includes a thorough economic and feasibility analysis to identify local and international market demand to ensure that use and therefore design proposals are aligned to economic demand. The results of the feasibility studies will inform phase two, which is the project initiation, the concept design, and approval stage. Phase three is the detailed design and appointment of a contractor stage in which we are targeting a groundbreaking date of August 2025, if not before. Phase four is the construction stage. And phase five is the operational readiness and handover. Minister Grange said the government is determined and deliberate about developing the national stadium into a world-class facility that meets the regulatory requirements of international sports federations. The redevelopment project is slated to begin in August 2025 and work will be done over three years. The Ministry of Health and Wellness will be introducing a new policy for the repair and maintenance of hospital equipment. Portfolio Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton made the disclosure at a recent press briefing at the Bustamante Hospital for Children in Kingston. He said a draft of the policy is expected within the next month and a submission will be made to Cabinet. 
Dr. Tufton says the public will also be updated on the progress. According to Minister Tufton, the new policy will result in service contractors being engaged on a long-term basis to repair and maintain equipment at hospitals across the island. The culture and the history of how we operate within this environment has been suboptimal in a number of ways in terms of the maintenance and I'm prepared to accept that. And one of the fears I have is that as we build out and modernize, which we are doing, a lot of money is being spent. We have to be careful that we similarly transition into a more efficient culture around maintenance of our plant, building equipment and otherwise. Dr. Tufton says by offering extended service contracts, suppliers will have to stock up on basic parts for equipment as well as carry out routine servicing and change of equipment. No equipment must be bought unless there is an extended service and the outsourcing of maintenance of a plant such as this to a firm that carries with it all the technical capacities. A transitional home is to be built at the Montego Bay Community Home for Girls, popularly known as Melody House. One million dollars has been donated to the effort through a partnership between the Jamaican Women of Florida, JWOF, and S Hotel Jamaica. JWOF's president, Aisha Rainford, says the transitional home will provide accommodation for the girls who have reached adulthood but do not have a family or a place to go. It will be a place where they can gain their independence, their skills, and their confidence needed for them to strive on their own and to be successful as they navigate adulthood. Alison Smith Hines is a former resident of the home that took her in when her father passed away and her only other accommodation presented her with physical abuse. Without this institution, without this home, we would not know where we would have been. When Aunt Claire had the talk with me saying that we're going to move, I would have to, I don't, as I said, I do not have any family members, any at all. And now I, I would have to go out into the world without any work experience. I was one of the lucky ones. I moved at 17, got into college at 17, and now I am a teacher at a prominent primary school in Kingston. And finally, Prime Minister Dr. Andrew Holness is encouraging young persons to aim high in the pursuit of personal and national development. Dr. Holness was speaking at the Chancellor Hall Super Lions Award Banquet on the weekend where he was among six awardees. He recalled his time on campus at the University of the West Indies Mona campus as one that has shaped him to be strong, fearless, patient, tolerant and respectful. The young men who are coming up now, benefiting from the resources of the country through tertiary education, that they still have a sense of responsibility for their country. That it is not all about what the country is going to give you, but what you are going to contribute to the development of your country. Dr. Holness said he is satisfied that there is a good stock of young men who can take up leadership roles in the society and that such aspiration is beneficial to the country. And that is important for any society, that the generations coming have the ambition and aspire to high ideals and high office because the leadership of the country, of any country, the leadership of Jamaica is important and I am satisfied that we will be seeing leaders coming out of Chancellor Hall as the generations change in our society. And that's it for JS News Today. I'm Twyla Whelan. Thanks for watching.